Hello, welcome back to Batch Reviews. Today we're looking at this, the new Vauxhall Grand Lab. But before we get stuck into the video, make sure you subscribe to the channel. If you've got any questions about this car, drop them in the comments box. And if you like this video, give it a little thumbs up. Right then, let's get started. Grandland, or Grandland X as it was originally called, has been part of Vauxhall's range since 2018 and since then Vauxhall has shifted around 70,000 of them. However, I've always thought this car has occupied a bit of a weird space in the PSA Stellantis model range because it was related to the Peugeot 3008 and the Citroen C5 Aircross. However, the Vauxhall has always looked a little bit boring, a little bit sort of plain and ordinary compared to the Peugeot and the Citroen. However, Vauxhall has completely updated it for 2022. They've given it a new look inside and out. I'm going to show you now everything you need to know. I'm going to go behind the camera. If you've got any questions, drop them below. So Vauxhall have completely updated the exterior styling of this car. The biggest change is of course this visor front end. We first saw it with the Mocha, we've recently seen it with the Astra and now the Grandland gets the uh, visor treatment. So what do we mean by visor? Well it's this black panel here that neatly integrates the headlamps and all the safety systems. They're right behind that black panel in the centre there. Um, there's a new bonnet as well with this very distinctive crease running down the centre. New headlights as well, these are Pixel LED, Intellilux Pixel LEDs to give their full name. They improve, well they vastly improve visibility. It's the only CSUV car in the segment to actually get Pixel LEDs. You can spec this car, you can just see it. We haven't got it on this car, but that little uh, square there, that is for the night vision. It's a 1300 pound option. And again, it makes the Grandland the only C SUV car to come with night vision. Vauxhall has also completely and utterly simplified its model range. So for the time being, there's just three models, the Design, the GS line, and the Ultimate. This is the Ultimate and it gets body colored trim. So all of the lower black plastic has been painted in this color. This color actually is called Cobalt Blue and it's a very pricey option, 700 pounds but it does look very nice indeed, especially teamed with this gloss black roof. Meanwhile, at the back, there are new rear light clusters and there's the Grandland script spaced out over the back of the boot lid. And we get the black badging, which comes as standard on GS line and the Ultimate. You also get a black badge at the front and it gives this car a very distinctive look, a very bold decision that by Vauxhall, because especially at the front, you're effectively hiding the fact that it's a Vauxhall. Vauxhall has also paid some attention to the inside, uh, which is good news because the Grandland X dashboard, I always thought was just a little bit too conservative, boring if you will. This car though, it takes a lot of design inspiration we've seen in the Vauxhall Mocha. So you get this pure panel, it's this section here which stretches across the top of the dashboard. It includes a 12 inch display for the uh, digital instrument cluster and this 10 inch touch screen. It's also a bit more interesting to look at in here. We've got this uh, patterned trim here. The quality feels a lot better. Nice squidgy soft touch plastics around the place. Vauxhall has also simplified this area as well. Not too much. Um, there are still the heating and ventilation controls here which is good news in my book. Um, this car's sister car, the Peugeot 3008, you have to go into the, well more often than not, you have to go into the touch screen to actually do simple things like change the temperature here. You've got proper old fashioned knobs and buttons, which is great. Um, and again, the quality in here feels good. This is the top spec ultimate. So you get this sort of leather effect around the console. You also get these leather and Alcantara seats on this top spec ultimate car. They've even won an award from a German company, sort of an expert in seating. So there we are. Vauxhall have really been thinking about the comfort of this car. 
As for the rest of the interior, unsurprisingly, it's all exactly the same as it was before. So there's quite a lot of space in the back, although rather unusually, there's space for three people's feet thanks to a near flat floor, but there isn't enough shoulder room. There's nothing clever about the seats, they don't slide or recline for example. They fold down in a 60-40 split with handy levers in the boot and a ski hatch comes as standard on the GS line. Speaking of the boot, at 514 litres, it isn't the largest of the family SUVs on sale, but it's certainly large enough with a practical square shape. The plug-in hybrid's boot is smaller at 390 litres due to the battery under the boot floor. An electric tailgate comes as standard on the Ultimate. So the Grand Land certainly looks a whole lot better inside and out, but does it still drive rather unremarkably? Now, Vauxhall has tried to keep things nice and simple when it comes to engines as well. There's a 1.2 three-cylinder turbocharged petrol with 130 horsepower. There's a manual gearbox and an automatic. There's a 1.5 litre diesel, again with 130 horsepower. And sitting at the top of the range for the time being is a plug-in hybrid using a 1.6 litre turbocharged petrol engine. And the total power output of that is 225 horsepower. Coming later in 2022 will be a 300 horsepower plug-in hybrid with an electric motor powering the back wheels, making it four wheel drive. Now we've got the 1.2 petrol here and it's a combination that's been used in a, a large number of Peugeot, Citroëns and Vauxhalls over the years and yeah it's, it's as good as it always has been, nice perky little engine up front, snappy gear change, uh, plenty of power has this engine and I also think it makes a nice noise, it makes that typical three cylinder hum and yeah it's a perfectly decent engine for what is quite a large car accelerating up to motorway speeds and this engine is more than up to the job. Now the motorway actually is a typical place you'll find a Grand Land and here this car really does shine. Um, it's very quiet, it's very refined. I can see why these seats in this top spec Ultimate car have won an award from a German company because they are incredibly supportive. I mean they're hugging me in all the right places and I can imagine doing a very long stint behind the wheel in this car. Now compared to days of yore there's only one diesel, a 1.5 and it comes with an automatic gearbox. Gone are the days when there was a multitude of different diesels and power outputs and gearboxes and front wheel drive and four wheel drive. Fox have just gone with one combination and they've gone with that because the sales figures back it up. People are turning their backs in their droves on diesel power in the mid-sized CSUV segment and which is why the plug-in hybrid could take on a newfound significance for the Grandland. Now in the Grandland X there were two plug-in hybrids available. Both were very expensive. Vauxhall have slashed the prices for that 225 horsepower one by around £3,000, meaning it could be very tempting to a lot of people. A lot of those people will undoubtedly be company car drivers due to the plug-in hybrid coughing out just 31 grams per kilometre of CO2, putting it into the 12% BIK band. For those who do go for the PHEV, just like with any other plug-in hybrid, they'll need to keep those batteries topped up to not only get the best MPG, but also make the sums add up. It'll take three and a half hours to charge thanks to the car's 3.7 kilowatt onboard charger, but Vauxhall will relieve you of a whopping 500 pounds if you want to upgrade that to 6.6 .6 kilowatts to make charging quicker. Now, Vauxhall have done some work there. It's not just uh, cosmetic work to this car. They've done made some a few engineering changes as well. So it's, it's a little bit smoother than it was before. Um, now, the Grandland has always had a bit of a stiff suspension setup, particularly in this car with its large wheels. Um, and it still is quite stiffly sprung, but it seems to go down the road in, slight, in a slightly more polished, fashion it just feels just a little bit more polished 
Another area where Vauxhall have tweaked is the steering. Now, the old Grandland X, I mean, it just wasn't a particularly nice car to hurl around a country road. And Vauxhall haven't completely changed it with this car, but it feels just a little bit sharper than it did. Um, and it, you just feel slightly more involved when you're on a country road, for example. Now, I still feel the Grandland sits in that place between its two sister cars, the 3008 and the Citroen C5 Aircross. The Peugeot, with its smaller steering wheel and slightly different suspension setup, feels a little bit more sporty. And the Citroen, with its advanced comfort suspension, feels more comfy. This sits bang in the middle. It's more than comfortable enough. It's more than nice enough to drive. There's not a huge amount to write home about, but more importantly, there's not a lot to complain about either. It's just a very nice, refined and comfortable family SUV, which let's face it, the vast majority of people want. Yep, let's face it, they do. A Ford Cougar or a Seat Ateca might be more fun to drive, and a Kia Sportage and a Hyundai Tucson might feel more modern and interesting, but the Vauxhall is a perfectly good SUV. It's just that you could say that about many other SUVs too. Hopefully you've enjoyed this review. Give my other videos a watch and please do consider subscribing to my channel. Thanks for watching. Thank you.